University. This next clip is about uh, fatherhood. Now, you interviewed a lot of guys on the on the walk and, and spoke to them about uh, what men need to be doing, spiritual leaders. Yeah, and, and you know, Father, what men need to be saying to other men. I mean, we mm -hmm. men need to be out there really, you know, rattling the cage of other men out there because when it comes down, boils down to it, you know, a large number, the majority of abortions would not take place. Um, you know, if it were if the men stepped up, and this was something, ladies and gentlemen, that we heard from a previous guest on the show, who is in the pro-life movement and, and made it very clear to us that over 60% of abortions out there, women who've had abortions, said that they would not have had the abortion if the man in their life, their father, the father of the child, a brother, some man would have stepped up and said, "I will not uh, let this happen. I will fight for uh, for you for the for the dignity of the child, and we will help take care of the situation mm -hmm. properly." with respect and with love, right. the sacredness of life. This is where men really need to wake up, you know, sit on the couch. We, we get all fired up over a football game or baseball game. We shout and cheer and scream, you know, rip our clothes off and paint our faces different colors and, and, and scream in sub-zero conditions for a football game, but we won't stand up for life. You know, we men are, what, we're, we're, what kind of a man are we? we? We're afraid to actually speak out when it comes to the dignity of life and the dignity of a woman. I mean, to me, there's such a cowardice there in so many men. And I'm not afraid to say that because I was on that, on that side as well for, for many, many years until I realized, look, as a man, my job is to protect and defend the most precious and sacred truths that are out there. And how much more precious do you get than life and, and, and the women around us in our lives? So, yeah, we, we kind of put it to the men out there asking them questions. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to say to other men? And how do we fire up men? And how do we rattle those cages to get men more active when it comes to standing up for life? Okay, well, let's take a look at this next clip with Doug talking to the men on the walk for life. There are many who believe that abortion is not a man's issue. They say that it's the woman who carries the baby and she delivers the baby, she nurtures the baby, therefore the man is not responsible. So this is clearly not a man's issue. Well, this could not be further from the truth. Abortion is wholeheartedly about the man as well as the woman. And we went into the streets to talk to some of these passionately pro-life men to hear why they're making such a public stand to walk for these lives, to walk for these babies, and for the dignity of the women that they love. Now, the sign you're holding here, Men Regret Lost Fatherhood from SilentNoMoreAwareness.org. Can you tell us a little bit about why you're involved in this organization? I'm involved with this organization because uh, it's taken a little time to get involved with it because I've had to deal with the pain that I've gotten from uh, an abortion. When I was 16, I got a call from my girlfriend and she said that she was going to have an abortion. She just wanted to check to see if that was okay with me. And uh, I got scared. I panicked. I was too young. Um, I, I encouraged her. And from that day on, it was like this darkness filled my life. I couldn't shake it. And uh, it's been, you know, 15 plus years and I've finally been able to just kind of get stronger. But I got, I want my healing from coming into the Catholic Church, going through RCIA and uh, getting baptized, learning more about the church. But uh, listening to Catholic Radio, AM 1620, Immaculate Heart Radio, and watching EWTN uh, has, I've received tremendous graces from, from EWTN and Mother Angelica, Father Mitch Pacwa, Life on the Rock, everybody there, everybody there being there uh, for everyone, you know, and me included. Um, I've just grown and I've healed from to the point where I'm stronger now and I can actually stand up and say, you know, I do regret my lost fatherhood and I'm silent no more about that. And to the men out there who need healing, who are in the same boat you were in at one point, where just living with that wound and that scar, being involved in an abortion and supporting it in some way, yeah. what do you want to say to them right now? What could you say in one sentence to them? Seek God and know that there's no sin that's greater than His mercy. And all the things that you may be trying to fill your life up that is not working, the drugs, you know, things that you're trying to mask your, your pain up with, it's not going to help you unless you seek Christ. Seek the Lord and His mercy. It's real. It changed my life. It changed countless others. Countless others. Countless others. Countless others. Countless others. Well, the, the truth of the issue is, is that the issue belongs to all people, men and women. And men, just as much as women, have a stake in life. 
So this is not just a woman's issue. It's about a woman's body and the child and the woman and t child in the woman's womb. This is about men being the protector and defender of that life as well. Men, men have to assume responsibility for their part in forming good families and in, uh, in dealing with the issue of abortion. It's not a one-sided issue. We need men to be men and assume responsibility for their part that they play in building up a just and a good society. We're here with Mike. Mike, what message do you have for other men out there when it comes to standing up and defending life? Uh, just praise God that uh, he gives us the grace to do what we do as parents and uh, look to Joseph for guidance and, and assistance and never take, uh, or I guess never miss the opportunity to love your kids as much as you can. Much as you can. Much as you can. Okay, we're here with Jack and Judy celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. We've got Jack. How you doing here, Jack? Doing fine, thank you. And yeah. Is lovely bride, Judy? That would be me. Still a bride after 50 years. And today is the day of your anniversary. Is that correct? Absolutely. That's correct. 50 years ago today, we were we were saying we do. Jack, what would you say is the head of the house and the, and the leader of quite a clan of wonderful individuals here? When it comes to the man being the spiritual head of that home and leading that family spiritually, what advice do you give to other men out there? I think that fatherhood is the most important vocation in the world today. I, I think that uh, that's what our culture needs and is missing, is uh, a, le a father that's a leader and a, it sets an example for their children. And a father who prays, and a, a father who isn't afraid to pray, who isn't afraid to study his faith and to know his religion and totally be a leader in all things Catholic. What kind of a man are you if you don't stand up for the dignity of a woman and the baby in the womb? Baby in the womb. Baby in the womb. Baby in the womb. Baby in the, womb. the choice is for me. I must take a stand. I'm not afraid. Choose life or choose death. Lord, take my you be my strength today.